So uh, we, we began last week just a short series that we're just calling Food for Thought as we begin um, this holiday season. And uh, you, when we think of the holidays, especially in church, you've got to think about food. <laughs> I knew I'd get one from somebody on this side. And... Um, <laughs> I knew it'd be one of the bald guys, but anyway, um, <laughs> we, 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 <laughs> the, the point is, is, is it's food for thought, and as we th- prepare for Thanksgiving, and we give thanks, and all the things, um, last week, uh, we talked about this, and begin, in the beginning of this, um, and, and getting, getting, getting ready, today I'm going to just, just entitle it, Who's Invited? Um, one of the things that I'll always remember about my dad's side of the family when we would have, go and spend Thanksgiving or Christmas, every time we went, there would always be someone there that I didn't know. Well, that wasn't pretty untypical because my, in my dad's family, there's nine, nine kids. So I, I, I've, I've been in places and people come and say, I'm your cousin. I'm like, who are you? <laughs> so, I mean, that, that's not a problem. And, and, but I'm talking about there would be, there would be um, mutts, so to speak, running around. and Not really mutts, not dogs, actually. Uh, but there would always seem to be somebody at Granny and Pawpaw's house. I'm like, who's that? Well, that's so-and-so's son. Or so. And it always seemed like every time there was some family gathering, there was other people that came along. And some of I, I, but you know, one of the things that I, that I recognize of that is that my grandparents were always welcoming to anybody to come and to celebrate and be a part of. And, uh, and so I, I appreciate that. And, and it was, it, it's, an, it's a neat thing. And so today when we talk about this, who's invited? So in Matthew chapter 9, verse 35, it says this. In fact, Matthew 9 and Mark 2 are the two passages I'll go to. I got a lot of passages I'll probably share with you this morning. But Matthew 9 says this. Then Jesus went to all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every sickness. Um, We read that about Jesus, but do you recognize when that says that about Jesus, that's who we, the church, are to be? We went to the towns and villages teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and every sickness. Do you realize that? That's not just, well, that's just what Jesus does. No, that's what the church is supposed to do. Mark chapter 15 says, these signs shall follow them that believe. So when he saw the crowds, when Jesus saw the crowds, he felt compassion for them because they were weary and worn out like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to the disciples, or his disciples, the harvest is abundant, but the workers are few. Therefore, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest. The harvest is abundant. Say that with me this morning. The harvest is abundant. Now, if you've got a harvest, if you're a farmer, which I don't know, they're, they're, I don't know that we've got any farmers in here. I'm a far cry from a farmer. My, my beautiful diamond, smooth and polished diamond, um, she, she grew up on a ranch and she mowed and all that. You know, she's done that stuff more so than I have. I've just heard about it, okay? And um, heard, heard about picking up the pecans. And anyway, that's a whole other story. And uh, I got a laugh, laugh out of her on that one. But the point is, is if, if you have a harvest, you don't just leave it in the field. Because the harvest represents many things, right? One, it represents food. And all of us like to eat. The other thing that the harvest represents, it, it represents provision. Right? They would, the farmers would take that, they would harvest their crop, they would take it to the marketplace and they would sell it. And with that, they would come back and they would do that process all over again. So not only did it provide food, but it also would make provision and for all the needs and other things. So the abundance, the, the harvest is abundant. 
Now, he's talking spiritually, but don't you think if it's abundant spiritually, and as a farmer, it's, it's the farmer's duty and requirement and uh, necessary for them to go and harvest that harvest so that they, can, that they can benefit from it, don't you think that Jesus is making a point to the church? He says his disciples, he's not just talking to the twelve, there are those that are following him uh, uh, included in the twelve, um, but he says the harvest is abundant, but the workers are few. In Mark chapter 2, it says this, while he, while Jesus was reclining at the table in Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners also guessed with Jesus and his disciples, because there were many who were following him. When the scribes of the Pharisees saw that he was eating with sinners and tax collectors, they asked his disciples, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard this, he told them, those who are well don't need a doctor, but the sick do need one. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Father, I would ask that today that as we would read the word and and look into the word, that today your spirit would convict us and challenge us, empower us and help us to not only um, hear it today with a spiritual ear, but Lord, that we would become all that your word says that we'll become. And we give you thanks and praise. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. So these two passages, Jesus says in one, the, the harvest is abundant. The harvest is uh, the the it's ripe unto harvest. It's ready. In fact, in John chapter four, um, Jesus in the same thought uh, he he makes a statement. It's white unto harvest. In other words, it's ripe. It's ready to be picked. It's ready to be harvested. It's ready to go. And and so we see this this morning that Jesus in making the statement. And I would say this this morning that if Jesus would have said that over two thousand years ago, how much more appropriate is that today? Say that the harvest is abundant. I will say this, we, and we use this as an excuse sometimes, but I can say this, the harvest is abundant, but the harvest is also much harder. And sometimes we use that as our excuse, well, well they just don't want to listen, and, they, and there's a church on every corner, that's what we can say in the, in the U.S., obviously, well, the, the, what, what if they reject me, or what if they're mean to me, or what if they hurt me, or what if all of these things, and, and the truth is, is, is those are things that we face, and I understand that, we all understand that, we all have our, our issues and our excuses on some of that, but Jesus said that the harvest is abundant, it's ready And he says, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send forth workers to the laborers. Can I tell you something this morning? You and I, you and I are the workers. And we can sit in here and we can pray, oh Lord, send somebody. And you know what he's going to do? He's going to knock on the door and say, I'm sending you. (laughs) When I thought about it, it reminded me of the the old story. I, I think it was, it's actually a joke where the guy... He, he, he's in a flood and he's praying, Lord, send me help. And, and early on, he sends a boat by and he says, oh, no. The guy goes, no, go away. The Lord's going to heal. Go, the Lord's going to save me. He's going to rescue me. And, and the floods keep me. And so the guy gets up on his roof and, and there comes another boat by and he says, uh, hey, uh, um, come on, let's, let's get, let me rescue you. And he goes, no, the Lord's going to save me. And, and so it gets... It's dire now, and the helicopter comes, and they drop the rope down. He said, they say, come on. He goes, no, the Lord's going to rescue me. And the guy dies in the flood, and he goes to heaven. He stand, he has Jesus. He goes, I prayed that you were going to deliver me. Why didn't you? And he goes, I sent you two boats, and I sent you a helicopter. What else did you want? <laughs> the thing is, is you and I are the workers. Lord, send them, Lord, send them, Lord, send them. And he's saying, how about you? <laughs> Why don't you go? But I'm, I, I'm not qualified. I'm not, I don't know all the these and the vows, and I don't know all the, all the stuff. I, 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 I'm not very good at talking, and, and what do I say? And, and, and we'll throw a lot of reasons why and excuses why we don't. And, and, and let me, and I'll boil it down to this. Just share your story. I don't know that in your story specifically you got to go to, to uh, 
Mark 1.17 or John 3.16 or any of those. You can just say, hey, this is what was going on in my life. And I recognize I was in need of a Savior. And, and I asked him to come. And you know something? This is what's happened since then. And they can say, oh, I don't believe that. Well, that's fine. They can say they don't believe it, but they can't refute your story. Because I know what God did for me. And you know what God did for you. And if they reject you or they don't accept it, that's, that's not your problem. It's their problem. And so the harvest is abundant. But I give you the story or the, this passage in Mark chapter 2 because it says this about Jesus. They, they began to... They begin to complain. They begin to ask, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? And isn't it just like the religious? Well, why are they here? They, they can't be here. They can't be here with that hair. <laughs> they, right? And we begin to ostracize and we begin to delegate who can and who can't. And yet Jesus said, because when he says sinners and tax collectors, he, he, he wasn't that, that, those weren't good qualities. <laughs> he wasn't giving them applause. Though, those were, in a sense, or the thought is, is those were degrading terms towards them. And yet Jesus' response is that those that are sick don't need a doctor. But I came to call those that are in need of doctors. So this morning, I'm, I'll ask you this. As we, and like I said, I know we tied into to Thanksgiving. I, the, whole, the whole deal is, is um, who, who are you inviting? And, and well, we're inviting our family. We're inviting our friends. We're inviting um, all these other people. And that's wonderful. And, and I hope you do. And I hope you have a great time. And that's what uh, we, our plan is, is. But when we talk about salvation, when we talk about the kingdom of God, when we talk about the spiritual harvest, who's invited? Well, let's, let's be real basic and real simple here. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. That's the good, bad, and the ugly. That includes you and me. <laughs> it's the world. Well, but, but, but they, they believe in a false God. He still died for those that believe in a false God. He died for those that would persecute him and that would fight against him. He, he, he died for those that would cry out and say, he doesn't even exist. Do you know that God died for the atheist? He may not believe in them, but he died Y'all will catch that later. Uh, <laughs> but who's invited? Everyone is invited. It's like Granny and Pawpaw's house. Everybody's invited. <laughs> like, who's that? Oh, that, everybody. And so we can't go, well, no, we don't want them here. Oh, we don't like those here. Oh, in fact, Jesus would give a, he'd tell the parable of the great supper. And in that parable, he talks about go and compel them all to go. Go to the least. Go to the broke, the busted and disgusted. <laughs> and invite them. Because he died for all, so we're all invited. Why? Well, Jesus says in Luke 19, 10, he says, um, or says this of himself, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save the lost. If it is Jesus' purpose, then can I tell you something this today? Then it's our purpose as well. To seek and to save that which was lost or which is lost. Um, we see this in, in 2 Peter 3, 9. And Peter was right. The Lord does not delay his promise, as some would understand delay, but his patience with you, not wanting any to perish. But all come to repentance. See, I, I want to encourage you this morning. We have time, but we don't have forever. We recognize that we're, we're, we're on the edge of this thing. But we have time, 
But we don't have forever, so that means we need, we, need an, we need to be urgent in our invitation. In fact, as we step into 2018, there's some things that we're going to begin to put before you as a congregation saying, Let, let's, let's be, be very recognizable of all the things that God has placed in our path and place for us to accomplish. And so we need to be urgent in the invitations. See, it's not that they're just missing out on some social, social event. It's not that they're just missing a, a, a Thanksgiving dinner. It's not that. They're missing eternity. I, I don't know about you, but it did to me, and, and, and even more so than I anticipated. I'd watched that video before, and listening to Bishop and seeing that video, man, it just, it, it stirred in me. And I almost came up and said, let's adopt three. <laughs> we have three, we need to replace those three with the good ones this time. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm playing, okay, we have three, we need to replace the two bad ones. <laughs> She's unreplaceable. So she's my, no. Anyway, I, I'm sorry. Ah, that's true. She's she is irreplaceable. Uh, uh, but the point is, is that they're not just missing a social event; they're missing eternity. Jesus said that the harvest is abundant. The harvest is abundant. So how? I, I, I'll tell you something this morning. It won't be because I preach better. Oh, it might help, but that's not the, that's not the answer. Um, it's not because we have some flash, flashy program or some big event, but it's when the church, it's when the followers of Jesus become obedient to what he's called us to do. It's when the church rises up and shows up and becomes all that he's called us to be. It's not because we can blame it on, well, our, our church is too small. They didn't have churches, and on the first day, they had 3,000 that came to Christ. They didn't even have a place. This is a tool. It's a tool. You know the why it's a nice tool? Because we got air conditioner. Because in the U.S., you got to be a little comfortable. you got to be able to do those things. Because people don't want to show up. But I'm going to tell you something. When the people of God begin to become who we're called to be, it won't be an air conditioner. It won't be a padded pew. It won't be a building. It's going to people be crying out to experience and know the presence and glory of God. But it's, it's, it's up to the church. Are we going to be obedient? Are we going to show up? So it's not some flashy program, some big event, but it's of church. So here, here, Mark 1, 17, he says this. Jesus says, follow me, and I'll make you become fishers of men. I bet, but could we say it this morning as well? Uh, follow me, and I'll make you become harvesters of men. So uh, how, how do we do this? Oh, we, we need to get fully in love with Jesus and follow him in every way follow me follow me he didn't tell him you got to go to school you got to have a degree you got to you got to know the these and the thous he just said follow me but you know in, in that he also gave him this command in Acts 1 8 or gave him this instruction he says but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses <laughs> So we need a fresh encounter. We need a fresh touch of Christ. And you go, well, well, Pastor, I thought that's what we always need. We do. I, I made a statement earlier uh, about the harvest is, is, is difficult. And you understand that. We, we face great difficulty on every side. People want to, oh, I, I don't agree with that and all those things. But I'm going to tell you this this morning. I, I want to I encourage you this. I want to challenge you this. When we face the greatest opposition, we need the greatest help. And that only comes by the Holy Spirit. You get that this morning? The thing that we need the most is normally the thing that we run from the most. Jesus also, in one of those, the parables that he talks about the Great Supper, he talks about they're invited and one says oh uh, I, I've got new land I need to go see the new land and another one says oh I've just gotten married and I need to go do this and another one says oh I've just got oxen and I need to go I need to go try them out and and you and I may not understand that because that's an agricultural thing but let me let me let me give you the SRV he says oh I, I need to go to the baseball field my son's got a game today I just bought a new boat 
I need to go try it out. Now, I'm not, I don't have anything wrong with baseball. I don't have anything wrong with the boat. That's not, that's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is, is we have a lot of reasons why we're not fulfilling what God's called us to do. Jesus said, those that love me keep my commands. So would the opposite of that be true too? Those that don't do my commands don't love me. Now that's not the scripture, I understand that, but I, I, I'm just asking, I'm, I'm asking myself that question. So um, the harvest is abundant. So what are you going to do? I'm just going to pray more, Pastor. I'm just going to pray, oh, pray more. Who is it? It's us. It's you and me. Who's invited? Everyone. Everyone. You don't have it. Well, I, I don't know if they're invited. Everybody's invited. Well, I, I just don't know if they'd like it. Who's invited? Everyone. And so this morning as we look at these thoughts, my, my, my prayer is, is that the, the Holy Spirit would begin to stir. And it's not just some emotional stir, not just something that, but that we begin to begin to have the heart of Christ. You know how we do that? We have a fresh encounter with our Savior. We have a fresh encounter with our Savior and He gives us His heart. And that's a heart that what that beats like this, that none should perish, but that all should be saved. To seek and to save that which is lost. That's his heart. Church, we can do a lot of things. And, and, and I use this only as we can build a building, but if we don't have his heart, we'll just have a nice facade out there. I don't, I don't, I don't, want, I don't want to fake this thing. And listen, I, I've got a lot of steps to take too. I've got a lot of things. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling and working through here. So I'm not, I'm not in any way trying to be um, critical or mean, but I'm just saying, hey, listen, God's calling. All are invited. What will we do? I'm going to ask the ushers to come. And, and this is how I want to end this service this morning. We yeah, typically um, like to, because of the Thanksgiving season and things, take time to receive communion and so this morning, I'm going, we're going to do that, but uh, I'm doing communion. Um, we're going to do it a little differently this morning. For one, I'm going to ask you to come here in just a few moments. But I'm wanting you to come in response to this. Jesus invited the disciples to take on Christ. This is my body. This is my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. What are, we, what, are we, what are we remembering? Well, yes, we remember his sacrifice. But we also have to remember his sacrifice wasn't just for you. It wasn't just for people in the United States. It wasn't just people that look like us. He did it for all people. And so, gentlemen, if y'all would just step forward a little bit, because what we'll do, if you'll step just toward them just a little bit, because what I want to do is I'm going to ask you here in just a moment, I want to ask you to come. And as you come, will you pick up the elements and come just stand here at the altar and we'll receive those elements in just a few moments together. But, but the way we're doing this this morning is what you're saying is, Lord, I'm, I'm making a commitment. I remember what you did for me and I'm making a commitment. I'm making a commitment by taking these elements I'm coming into, as you came into covenant with me, I am coming into covenant with you to fulfill who I'm supposed to be as a part of the body of Christ. So Father, not because someone else, but Lord, I ask that we each would have an encounter with you today. In your precious name. Sean's coming and I, I just want you to understand something. Everything 
is supposed to be here. Oh, there it is. Um, you'll grab two cups. One's inside the other one. I, the first one I grabbed, it wasn't there. That's why I was like, oh, no. <laughs> I grabbed the lucky one. But in the bottom cup will be the bread, and the top cup is the juice. So I'm just going to ask you to take both of them. You don't have to worry about where's the other one. They're both there. But today, you'd say, Pastor Scott, I, 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 I make a new commitment. I make a, I come into a, a new agreement. I come into a new alignment with Christ. As I receive communion and do this in remembrance of Him, I receive this. So if you'll come and as you gather, as you, gra- as you receive your elements, if you'll just come and you'll find a space. Um, Val, if you'll just step that way, just look, thank you. If you'll just come and find a spot. And just as Sean plays, as he worships, would you just take a moment to worship? Would you just ask the Lord to just really begin to work in you, to give you His heart, to take your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh, to take your heart that is biased and give you a heart that is soft and pliable like the heart of Jesus. Lord, we just thank You today. Lord, we cry out to You today because, Lord, we recognize that it's not going to be a program. It's not because I do all the do's and the don'ts. It's because I am in love with You, fully and completely in love with You. And because I love You, because we love You, we follow Your commands. And Your commands are this to go. Your commands are this.